have done that with my more my, my little artist books and my flyers and, and the Bibliothèque Nationale de Québec has a, a box of my stuff and that's great. I haven't talked to them about my personal effects, you know, my personal papers. Uh, but what I am doing is organizing them and cataloging them for use in a potential art show, you know, um, binding them into, into mysterious tomes, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I have all this stuff. It's raw material. I, I slog through it. And a part of my artistic practice has always been to grab my own work and remix it and bring it out again mm -hmm. at nauseum. Yeah. Uh, so one thing led to another, I, in CGEP I joined the student newspaper, uh, it was called The End at Vanier College, uh, I was assistant entertainment editor or something like this, uh, so I did some paste-ups and I did some covers for the, the next, that paper folded and another one started, I think it was called The Issue or something, and I have some covers that I did for that, uh, that's student newspaper, which is interesting to see your designs uh, littering the hallways of CJEP. Um, and then in McGill, I joined the literary magazine Scrivener at, uh, yeah, at McGill. Um, and then I started doing posters for literary readings. So in CJEP, I was doing a couple of punk rock flyers and just, you know, whatever my friend's music was, you know. Uh, and then I started kind of dipping into the literary community and doing flyers for readings. How is it that you stuck with the drawing into the photocopying? Why no painting and stuff like that? Pardon me? Why no painting? There was always painting. There was always? Okay. There was always, there's always been painting. There's always been uh, uh, drawing. There's always been a uh, uh, fairly high level of experimentation. Um, where, I don't think I've ever seen a painting of yours. Oh, I have. I've had painting shows. Yeah. And yeah. I have been I've forgotten about it. Uh, the I apologize. No, that's perfectly all right. The painting that... The little painting that I've done was, let's say, after the year 2000, publicly, and it was pop. You know, very bubblegum bunnies mm -hmm. or um, very streamlined uh, science fiction entities and alien text uh, and stuff like this. Um, and, but I've always painted in that I've always sculpted and always drawn, always played, tinkered took things apart, you know, uh, cataloged, um, wrote. Um, so there was always this kind of creation with whatever happens to be at hand, you know. So, of course, there's paint. So I would collect my mom's old um, nail polishes and uh, dab it on paper and whatnot and uh, keep little scraps. So I have all this stuff. So I've always been kind of a little bit of a factory or a machine, just always making whatever. Mm -hmm. Not really worried about it. Uh, not really worried about um, top level skill or uh, materiality. Like, it's okay, I'm just experimenting, I'm just playing. Th hence the rich or poor, I will do this anyway. I don't have to focus my, um, my education or my career uh, uh, path with art, you know? It's only later on that I started going, okay, maybe I could do something with this, you know. Or, uh, I do it anyway, um, I sh maybe a part of me should take it seriously. Mm, you know, not seriously enough to take the fun out of it, of course. You know, it's always been a sideline, but a very, uh, maybe an all-encompassing sideline. Okay. Um, How did you get into the gallery now? Okay. Let's take the other track. Okay, um... In 1998, uh, my father and my uncle opened up Monastiraki, and the same uncle who put your stuff up on. That's right. Yes. Um, and uh, he's always his house has always been uh, is, is still decked out with uh, cool objects, collectibles. Because uh, he was an artist, he is an artist, um, and a collector. So his house has always had really cool stuff in it, and. Uh, Anyway, he and my father had the line. They knew some pickers. They were able to go to a few estate sales. They filled this space with all kinds of furniture and lamps and found paintings and scraps and whatever. Teacups and doilies and, and everything, the whole kit. Um, my father invited me into the business in the year 2000. To only scanned two years after he had it so he could pursue uh, a job with a pension. And uh, I took over the, the business. Um, I've always been a collector anyway, but a very particular collector. 
not really collecting things that had great market value. Uh, even though I might have some old hockey cards and some old Star Wars <laughs> trading cards. It's not great market value now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's all for the future. The, the, the remote future when... Uh... Anyway. Uh, so I've always collected things. Um, but it took me eight years in this space before I realized that I was following my father's program. And he had the place for two years. And I had for eight, and I was still doing his shtick. And his shtick was all by accident anyway. My uncle just basically was the, the guy who um, hooked up with some connections on how to get all this stuff. So here I am, you know, 2007, 2008, and I realized that this space is mine. And uh, since day one, since 2000, I started putting my friend's art in here. You know, from the comics community in Montreal, some of their uh, paintings, some of their uh, framed drawings, and as well as zines and small press, because I've always been involved somehow in zines and small press. Always. Um, so, yeah, all these lines converge. Um, the formal gallery aspect of Monastiraki started with Jennifer McIntyre, my friend who is... Um, She's done some curation, she's done some filmmaking, uh, collage, um, and she's very involved in the healing arts, massage therapy, uh, shiatsu massage. And so we were talking, uh, she said, I want a gallery space. I said, I have a gallery space, even though what I had was a very full junk shop. Um, so we worked hard to clear the space in the front, organize some art shows. And it's evolved from there. Um, right now, my partner, well, two years ago, so that's in 2000, and where are we now? It'd be 2009 then. Let's say 2009, something like that. Um, my partner, Emily O'Brien, moved in with me um, and came into the shop. And what was amazing about that is that she breathed new life not into a gallery section of the store but the store as a unified whole so that the art and the spaciousness is moving throughout the entire it, the entire space is being used it's not this empty pristine space in the front uh, mess of chaos um, just behind that um, so we've been polishing that stone and, and making the space behave in a user-friendly fashion so people could come in and actually see things. Um, and it allowed me to, um, allowed us to uh, focus on little corners of collectibles and scraps and junk and everything and make them a little bit more intentional. Because to design, and this was my... Uh, problem for many years here at Monasteraki is that I had to, I had a, a desire to design a space, but it was full of stuff, really full of stuff. Um, so, yeah, right now it's, it's, it's a working, it's, it, it works, um, our collections could be highlighted, uh, but not at the expense of something else, you know? People could come in and, and check out little zones and enjoy themselves and actually do some shopping. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas before, I, it was a full crazy junk shop, but I was, I was putting in these jokes. I was juxtaposing objects together, and it was very rare that somebody would come in and say something like, I like your eye, or I see what you're doing here. Um, from the outside, from the window, it was just like, oh, that's a crazy dusty mess, I'm not going in there, or I'm going to go in there when I have time. And people, you know, it's only the very few uh, penniless people that come in and are amazed by very full spaces. Um, so right now we are an uptown boutique and so is the, the whole neighborhood is an uptown boutique. So it kind of works together.